Hey everyone, welcome back to the MedBros channel and today I want to do a video on how I actively read and how I annotate my notes. So in the How I Memorize Everything in Medical School video that I did, uh, the comments were really asking on how I actively read and what exactly I'm doing as I'm reading and how to get through really difficult texts. A lot of the medical books and a lot of the research you have to read, whether you're a medical student or in any kind of science at the graduate level, it can get pretty complicated. And that's a whole topic in and of itself on why it's so complicated uh, when you're reading a research paper and why do these uh, scientists like to present their ideas with this really complex jargon and, and use really complicated things to a lot of the times represent pretty simple ideas. But there's nothing we can do about that but what we can do is develop a, a way to tackle these papers and take it one step at a time to figure out what's going on whether you're reading a textbook or you're reading a research paper. So one of the main problems that a lot of people have is to read something and stay focused on it and stay concentrated on it and not let your mind wander off everywhere. Um, and that's definitely a big problem that I have is uh, throughout high school, throughout college, I would be studying and my mind goes places and I totally have to reread the same page 10 times. So one of the best techniques that I've figured out that works for me is to always keep your hands moving, always be actively reading. So active reading could mean different things for different people. For some people, active reading might be, you know, once in a while you circle something, once in a while you underline something, um, you write something on the side uh, of the, of the uh, paragraph that you don't want to forget. For me, active reading is always, always, always moving my hand over everything I'm reading. So majority of the time uh, when I'm reading, like a lot of people are noticing in my study with me that I'm just constantly underlining things. Why was I doing that? That's just how I read. That's um, I literally, as I'm reading, I'm underlining because it keeps my mind focused. It keeps me uh, focused on the task that I'm doing it. So the more things your brain is occupied doing, the less it's gonna be likely to go wander off somewhere. So if I'm focused on reading and I'm focused on processing the information and then I'm also focused on underlining, it's just one more thing that I'm keeping my brain occupied with to prevent it from flying off in different directions. One downside to this is your book can get very, very messy. So a majority of my pages end up looking like this, where, I hope you guys can see it, it's just like the entire paragraphs just underlined as I'm reading, as I'm reading. So that is the first thing I do to keep my mind focused. Obviously the basics of, you know, find somewhere comfortable to study, don't get distracted, uh, phone off if that works for you. I don't really tend to get distracted by my phone too much. Um, you know, get people out of the way that that are gonna bother you when you're studying. I always preferred studying alone. You know, for some people it works to bounce ideas off other people or if you guys are studying the same thing, uh, to ask questions, but I just find that it just gets annoying and slow, it slows me down. So uh, I just like to study by myself, stay focused. Now, the next thing is to create a set of symbols that work for you. So as I'm reading, I'm underlining everything. Okay, that's great. Then if I come across something super important, I tend to circle it. If I come across something that I kind of want to connect to something previously, I put a square around it. It's something that I don't want to uh, go deep into details figuring out out right now I kind of got the gist of it but I want to come back to it I just dog here the page so the next thing is as you're reading and it's a really complicated text and you don't know what's going on it's important to take it one step at a time when you start reading anything in science you're gonna come across really confusing terms uh, the paper is gonna start off or whatever your science paper you're reading or even a textbook it's gonna start off with a bunch of like jargon a lot of really hard terms you've never really heard of before so what you need to do is take it one step at a time so every time something comes up that you don't really know, you can't ignore it. You have to go look it up. You have to go and on the side of your workspace, you just have to have Google open. A lot of students tend to just ignore a bunch of key terms that show up and think it's gonna be explained later. You need to tackle it as it goes. And in the beginning, it might be a lot. It might be you're looking up 10, 15, 20 terms like per page or something like that. Um, that's okay because those terms, when they reoccur later, you don't have to look them up. You'll know them, you'll know what they're talking about. So when you're picking apart a text or you're picking apart something really difficult to read, it's important that you look everything up that you do not understand. You don't know how to, um, you don't know the definition of something, you don't know what they're talking about conceptually. You need to really iron out that concept that they're going over before you move on to something else. So the key critical thing to this entire 
topic of active reading and annotating is you cannot be scared to write in your book. And if you are scared to write in your book, um, use a pencil because that's what I do. A lot of people use highlighters and pens and things like that. Uh, hard to erase and if your book takes pencil really well, like you can write on it um, without it smudging or anything like that, I recommend using pencil. The other key thing is when you go and look something up, make sure you write it in the margins of the page that corresponds to what you looked up. So don't just look it up and kind of store it away in your brain. That's not gonna work as well as you taking the time to take that stuff you looked up and put it down on the page next to the place where you were confused. That is one of the most key critical things that I can say helped me in retaining my information and making me an effective active reader and helping with my annotations is write down everything you possibly can into that book, whatever you can fit into that space. And I'll show you guys. This book is like pretty much every page of this book looks like this. It's just, it's just full of just stuff, like all the stuff in the margins, like everything circled, anything that I think we missed out on. Cause this is kind of a review book first date for those of you guys that don't know. This is a review book for um, all the stuff you pretty much learned in the first two years of medical school, but it's missing a lot of stuff. And I think the most critical thing that I did was take that stuff that's missing and write it directly into here. So now we get a question wrong on UWorld or some kind of question bank um, and say it was about Crohn's disease. I could come back here and I could have every single thing that I think is important for step one uh, about Crohn's disease right here. And whatever I got wrong on the question in UWorld or whatever question make I was using and the answer they gave me, I would add it here. For example, in Crohn's disease, I thought it was important to note that these patients can get iron deficiency and B12 deficiency that can lead to anemia. Um, that's not in first aid and I probably got a question wrong on it or I read it somewhere and I thought, hey, that's pretty important and I put it down here. And I can vividly remember questions that I got on step one that were asking about specific vitamin deficiencies and what are the consequences when you do have Crohn's disease. And the best part about it is there is an additional component that you get when you do something like this. And that is for those of us that have this kind of photographic memory. I wouldn't say I have photographic memory, but I would say there are some components of photographic memory to the way I learn. Um, if I go back now and I do like a question, I can kind of see that page that we just saw with the Crohn's coming down on this side and the ulcerative colitis coming down on this side. I can kind of visualize that as I'm doing my exam and I can even use different techniques. If I can't remember the exact fact, I might remember, Okay, on the bottom left of the page, it was saying something about iron and B12, while on the bottom right of the page, it was talking about, you know, no higher risk in smokers for ulcerative colitis. So, and again, back to the how I memorize everything lecture, definitely take your little sketches of your characters and put them right into your book. All of these things are gonna come together, your annotations, your pictures, where it was in the book, um, and it's going to help you retain all this information. I'm telling you that this is, this and the little pictures and the and how I memorize everything, that is primarily how I studied for STEP. That's how I retained a lot of the information for STEP. And I do think a lot of it can be applied to whatever you're studying in whatever field you're doing. It's all about thinking how you're gonna come back and look at that page in the future. Cause you will be back to look at that page. If you really wanna master that material, you need to do multiple passes on it. And it's really about optimizing those next few passes that's really what you're trying to do with annotating your notes. You're not really putting it down and just kind of leaving it there. You're always thinking, what can I put down so that next time when I come and look at this page, I'm gonna get a really, really good understanding or, or direct yourself on that page to where you can go to get that information. Whether that be a YouTube video you saw, whether that be another page of the same book that you got that information from, make sure you put that down in your notes so then you can refer to that when you come back to it. And it might seem overwhelming at first, say you're reading something super complicated and you're just constantly looking looking stuff up and annotating in your book. It takes hours. When I first started uh, studying for step one, I was looking up every single thing. I would, for example, I would do a question on you and I would get it wrong and it would be about um, alpha one, beta two, beta one, all the sympathetic nervous system receptors. Um, I would get a question wrong on that and then I would go to my first aid book and I'd see this page on all these receptors. So then I would go over here and see this page on all of these receptors. And this is all the things these receptors do in your body. So then I'd be here. And then after learning this, I would be like, 
okay, that's great that there are these receptors, but what are they useful for? Well, they're useful for all these drugs that act on these receptors. So then I would have to go and investigate and watch, oh, this is so complicated. I would go and investigate all of these drugs and how they're acting on the receptors that I just went and looked up. So again, I was looking this up and then that would lead to questions about the drugs. So I would go look that up. And so one u world question ended up taking me down so many nooks and crannies that I had to decipher and break down and look up. Um, and it took hours, it took hours to get through even the first couple questions. But the next time I came across a question that had to do with these specific types of receptors and drugs, I didn't have to look them up. I put in all that work, so I knew it. And even if I got the question wrong, I would just have to come back here and refresh myself. So it's all about making your passes really effective, making sure you made all the notes, making sure you made all the annotations the right way the first time so that the next time the same kind of questions come up, you're ready for them and you have them ready in your notes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys don't forget to subscribe. We're definitely working on getting some more helpful videos out and some entertaining ones as well. I've been doing my ob guy rotation and it has been uh, very interesting and I definitely have a lot of stories to share, uh, but I still have three more weeks left. So once that's done, I'm gonna be making some videos about that. Uh, so stay tuned for that because those are gonna be pretty fun to go over. Make sure you guys share this video with somebody that you think might benefit from some of these tips. So thanks for watching guys and until next time.